just as a reminder, this session is intended for our partners within the ISPs. So if you are not representing an ISP, we would greatly appreciate you choosing a separate um, webinar to learn about the challenge process. And we'll be sharing links to where you can find that information in the chat very shortly. Thanks so much. We'll get started so shortly. Thank you so much, Irene. Good morning, everyone. Um, we'll go ahead and get started today. And thank you so much for taking your time and attending the, the webinar slash training session for the BE challenge process. Uh, as Erin mentioned, that this is a webinar for our uh, ISPs. So this is catered to what a general um, bead challenge process, but if there is any question, there will be some role for local government or tribal government as well. Uh, we integrated that to make sure that um, uh, our ISP partner understand what will be the role for local government, what will be the role for nonprofits, and what will be the role for the ISP uh, themselves. And we'll be happy to take any question around that. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much again. Uh, as you probably know that Arizona state of Arizona received almost close to a billion dollar in bead funding and um, this funding will be distributed uh, as a sub grantee um, to the sub grantees to build this broadband infrastructure network all across Arizona for the unserved and underserved household later this year. So before that, there is a um, process implemented by NTIA. Uh, to make sure that a state is not leaving behind a single household which is unserved or underserved. Any household which was wrongly identified as served um, due to some data error or some other kind of mis uh, miscommunication, we are trying to weed out those areas or those BSLs in through this process. So, Okay, so the bead challenge process is really vital. It determines all the locations of unserved and underserved areas and the anchor institute, community anchor institute within, within Arizona that are eligible for bead funding. Uh, the way our volume one and volume two is written, that the state of Arizona will deploy the bead infrastructure using the billion dollar. And if there is anything left over, that money go will, go, will, will go towards connecting the community anchor institute. So it's a really crucial step achieving bid goals. We all the unserved, underserved location and eligible community anchor institute must be identified to achieve the bid program goal of providing access to the affordable broadband to all Arizonans. <clears throat> so last year when we published our volume one, we published a list of unserved and underserved BSL, as well as we published a list of community anchor institute, which has one gig symmetrical connectivity and which doesn't have one gig symmetrical connectivity. So after refining through that 
uh, we, it's our responsibility at this point to connect all those unserved and underserved households and the community anchor institute based on the funding, which uh, does not have one gig symmetrical connectivity. Identifying that is the first step in this process. Um, uh, improve um, the quality of data. Before we run the sub grantee selection process or the procurement to select vendors for a specific project area or ISPs for a specific project area, we need to make sure all the data are up to date. We are aligning with the federal government or any other federal funding or private funding came here in the state. So it's an evidence-based, uh, evidence-based, uh, fair, transparent, and expeditious bead challenge process as outlined in the NOFO and the challenge process policy notice. Um, we will use this to uh, find the accurate result, efficient process, and efficient allocation of the bead billion dollars. The, the sub-grantee selection process where we deploy the billion dollar cannot run without having the accurate and comprehensive list of the community anchor institute unserved and underserved. So this process, the bead challenge process, will make sure that we have the most up-to-date map aligning with private funding, other federal funding, and any funding or invest any funding or infrastructure project invested by local government. So only three different entities who can challenge um, or participate into this bid uh, challenge process are unit of local and tribal government, broadband service provider, and nonprofit organizations. So let's have a look at what exactly allowed in the, in the challenge and what exactly not allowed uh, in the challenge process. So we, uh, we as a state broadband office will only allow challenges for the following grounds. So um, we will, uh, we will uh, accept challenges on the el eligibility of the broadband serviceable location. That means uh, if we have an unserved or underserved area, but as an ISP, you are providing a connectivity using reliable broadband delivery. So if we again go back to our volume one and two, for a state of Arizona, the reliable broadband delivery uh, method is any wireline connection except DSL and um, fixed wireless broadband using the license frequency. So if as an ISP, you are providing a, um, uh, a connectivity over 100 by 20, but that is still shows unserved or underserved for that particular area, you can always submit a challenge. Select those polygons or select those um, BSLs and you can submit a challenge to us that those areas are technically not served and it's already uh, technically served, uh, not unserved, and you're already providing service there. Then enforceable commitment for existing BSL. If you have a plan um, right now, like you or received any funding directly from federal government, there is a separate set of funding which directly came from federal government to the ISPs here in the state of Arizona. That include RDOF funding, that include ECAM funding, other USDA infrastructure funding, and a lot of like local government funded broadband project. So if those projects are currently under development or you are, um, as an ISP, you are in, in the course of finishing those projects by June 30th this year, we would like to know about it. And you can submit those um, enforceable commitment to us, letting you know, letting us know that uh, those areas are covered through some other uh, um, source of funding, uh, any federal grant or state grant or something like that. We have a set of data which was developed in partnership with NTIA. They ran a de federal deduplication and all of those federally funded area will be in that map. However, if we miss something and you received a RUS dollars grant loan from USDA or some other set of loan from other federal agencies, you can always submit uh, challenges. However, just a reminder, all these challenges will be in the household level. So we need to know what big BSL, the broadband serviceable location of residents, you residents, resident, uh, or residential addresses you are serving uh, in the challenge process portal. Uh, the planned or existing service area. Um, for any planned or existing service area where you invested your federal funding uh, or on the course of finishing those projects by June 30th this year, 
or at least went through the permitting process or have a far franchisee agreement signed with a town, have your permitting ready, have your financials in place, and you are currently going through a construction process, you can submit a challenge for those existing BSL area. If you are delivering those services using one of the reliable methods we discussed earlier, we will be take and we with the right amount of uh, evidence, we'll be able to take that off from the map. Uh, if those are on unserved or underserved area. The identification of community anchor institute and um, if the community anchor institutes are eligible for one gig symmetrical service. If a community anchor institute is um, um, eligible for bead funding, um, and, however, it's only, um, it's already have a one gig symmetrical service within the 500 meter of that uh, compound, then that determines the eligibility of the community anchor institute in this process. Um, what is not allowed in this challenge process is the addition of broadband serviceable location. So, um, and removal of broadband serviceable location. We are not accepting any addition to the BSL, uh, the national BSL map. You can still submit it as an ISP. If you find there are new households in an area in a census block you are currently working on, you can directly uh, submit that data to, um, um, to FCC and FCC will be able to upload, uh, update that into their map. Uh, we are using Fabric version three for this challenge process. So just an FYI, I know a lot of you have the license from CostWest. So when you are looking into which areas you would like to submit challenge or you want to start, uh, basically you want to send us your planned or existing PSL or enforceable commitment area, uh, you sh the, better, the better would be we can match the data easily if you use the Fabric version three. Um, <clears throat> so our challenge process as of today will be, um, we are, uh, we're waiting on NTIA to approve our volume one. So both volume one and two were reviewed by, currently under review by NTIA. Without volume one approved, we cannot start the challenge process. However, we are hoping that volume one will get approved soon and we'll be able to kick off the challenge process. So with our current timeline, um, we are uh, going to open the portal, the portal which you will use to submit a challenge we will open that portal on March 1st. So we will keep the portal open for 15 days and ISPs, local government, tribal government will go through a registration process. Once the registration has to be approved by us. So you can hire um, as an ISP, you are most welcome to hire your own consultant who are consultants who are helping ISPs and nonprofits in different territory or different jurisdiction. You can definitely do that. But at the end of the day, you will be the registrar, registered um, entity in the system and you will have to submit those data. So we will open the challenge process portal on March 1st, keep it open for 15 days. If by that time we get an approval on our volume one, our challenge process window will open um, <clears throat> on um, March 15th. So our challenge process window will be open for 50, uh, 60 calendar days. And then there will be a rebuttal period. That's where if you, as an ISP, you get challenged from a local government, uh, tribal government, or any other ISPs, you will have 15 days to respond um, to that um, challenge. And after that, we will run our 30 days, which where we will determine which challenges are valid based on the rebuttal and everything we received from the ISPs. Now, if someone, a entity challenge um, the ISPs in these 60 days, we will right away reroute those challenges to you. And that 15 days countdown will start from that point, the day you are receiving the challenge. And uh, all these challenges, all these rebuttals, will be posted after this rebuttal phase on our website to make sure that whole challenge process is a fair, transparent process. And all the decision of the acceptance or rejection of the challenges decision taken by the state broadband office will also be posted right after the challenge process. It will be posted for at least 60 days before we open up the whole state for uh, for the bead grant. So there will be opportunities um, to discuss if you are not satisfied with our decision or the decision the state broadband office is making on our side. Within that cal 15 calendar days, you can 
well, you are welcome to book an office hours if you are not sure how to respond uh, to this challenge as an ISP, and we'll be happy to help you in this process. Um, <clears throat> here is a simple diagram um, of how the bid challenge process will work. So challenger, in this case, if we consider the challenger as a, as a local government or um, tribal government or an individual, the individuals are technically not a challenger, but they are allowed to take the speed test data. So when we are releasing our, um, uh, the challenge process portal, we'll be also releasing a speed test uh, module. Our speed test module is one of the approved one by um, NTIA. Um, and that will be the that will be the UCLA speed test um, uh, the UCLA speed test for um, uh, we'll be using the UCLA speed test in our speed test module. So if a resident is taking a speed test uh, challenge and they have to take this test for three different days in uh, in a certain time frame. Uh, and an average of that speed test challenge will be submitted to state broadband office, need to be submitted by a local government. So when it, when that gets submitted, the, the module automatically detects few information, the addresses, um, the, the IP addresses, uh, the physical addresses, and person who's taking the test. If that does not match with, um, with the physical address, the IP address, in our system or the BSL where the test was taken from, it will not be accepted. Or if it did not follow the BID uh, or NTI provided guideline, like taking three tests in a three uh, different day, it will be stored in our system. None of this speed test related data or any sort of challenge will be deleted from our system. We're keeping all this data as per the NTI com compliance uh, requirement because for future uh, public data request or future analysis, we have to keep this data. If it's a valid challenge, that will be um, a provided, uh, that, that, that challenge will be sent to the ISPs and ISPs will have 15 days to send a rebuttal um, when it comes to um, uh, the challenge rebuttal. So if the ISPs does not respond within 15 days, we will go ahead and update the BSL map all these tools, all these maps are going to be on real time. That means if someone send a challenge that will be um, updated in the right time in real time uh, to make sure that everyone can see which area got challenged and challenged by whom. Uh, th there, is a, there was a question that um, if the challenger or ISP who got challenged will be able to see who challenged them. Yes, those information are going to be public. So all this information will be posted on, um, on our website for the transparency purposes. So if once we receive the rebuttal from the ISPs, we'll review both sets of data. And if it makes sense, we'll go through an adjudication process. And if it's an acceptable challenge, we'll open up that BSL or that particular area for bid funding. If the rebuttal is sufficient enough, we will make sure that we are going back and sending a notification to the challenger that it was not an accepted challenge and this is the reason for that. And that data will also be posted on the website. Um, so as I mentioned before, that uh, we will publicly post um, um, all this challenge data and rebuttal data before the final determination are made. Uh, we will publicly post the documentation explaining the challenge process if approved by NTIA before starting the process. We're hoping to post that data on 23rd. Um, so in our website, we will post step-by-step -step process, how can community um, um, a community can, or ISPs or local government can take the challenge process, the list of unserved, underserved, and served location, the list of community anchor institute, and templates how you can submit a bulk challenge when you are going through this challenge process and other flyers and other related document. There will be a webinar uh, at the end of my, uh, the first week of March, so around March 6th or 7th. And that webinar will be a training from the partner who's building this tool. Uh, we are going with AppGeo slash Sunborn who are building this portal for us. They are building the same kind of portal in 12 different states. So they will be going through a process uh, of training um, our local government, tribal government, and uh, and uh, and the ISPs that how to select those areas or select multiple BSLs and submit a um, challenge process. 
that will happen next year. Please stay tuned for that email and that uh, time, uh, that uh, schedule. Um, we will host a public facing website where the documentation will be posted and all challenge will be posted. We'll make sure that personally identifiable, inf identifiable information will be protected in this process. And we'll also make sure that we are actively informing and educating our local government, relevant nonprofit and ISPs in this process and the deadlines of this whole bid challenge process. Um, so there are 11 types of challenge and some of them, uh, the resident will take it and local government will submit on their behalf. Some of them, you as an ISP can submit. So I'll quickly go through um, those 11 types of challenge before we start accepting questions. Um, the, the first one is availability. If a broadband service identified um, in the FCC BSL map or in our map, the, port, the map in the portal, is not offered in a location, and that can include AMDU, uh, then it's a valid challenge. So the resident can take a screenshot of the provider's webpage. A resident can submit an email or a screenshot of an email uh, where the service was requested in last 180 days. A resident can send us a picture of the suitable infrastructure, like there is no fiber, there is no pole, or there is no infrastructure in place in that town by that proposed um, ISP. A letter or email dated within last 365 calendar days that the provider failed to schedule a service installation or offer an installation date within 10 business days of request. And, and a letter or email dated within the last 365 calendar days indicating that service provider requested more than the standard um, installation fee to connect the location or the service provider quoted an amount in excess to the provider standard in its installation charge in order to connect service in that location. So those are um, allowed document in resident or local government can submit when they are submitting an availability challenge process. Um, so as a, as a service provider, uh, you can submit a bill for last 12, any bill for last 12 months a, uh, that okay, this location is already subscribed by stating that. If the evidence was a screenshot from the subscriber and believed to be an error, we can, um, we can accept a screenshot um, which from your uh, network management system, which shows that the service is available at this, um, at this location. Uh, if the service provider submits an evidence that service is now available as a standard installation without adding any uh, additional charges, um, a written documentation or a copy if you send to the customer at that location as a paper copy or a letter, I think that can be submitted. Um, or if you previously sent that, that can be submitted as a challenge rebuttal. The speed test. Um, so the module, the Oopla module, the resident or subscriber will be using uh, if they have an existing connection in their home, but it's not meeting the standard of 100 by 20, the actual speed uh, tier, if it fails below the unserved and underserved threshold determined by NTIA, that will be a valid choice. Um, that will be a valid challenge. So a speed test by the subscriber showing that insufficient speed and meeting the requirement of the speed test. They can submit a, um, a speed test challenge to us using our own, using the portal we are launching or module we are launching. Service provider can send us um, uh, countervailing speed test evidence showing sufficient speed probably from the, their network management system. Or we can discuss more. We'll be, we will be releasing some more guideline on that, so stay tuned. Um, Latency, same thing. Um, the latency will also be collected um, through the speed test challenge. So if you do not agree with the latency submitted as a challenge, you can send your performance measurement from your own network management system as a screenshot um, to, to make sure that you are providing a right uh, rebuttal. Um, a data cap. So as you probably know, the acceptable data cap by FCC nationally is almost 600 gig, 600 gig. So um, if there is a data cap and which is unreasonable put on the plan uh, that can be submitted as a challenge as well so the customer can send a screenshot from provider web page or customer can provide a description uh, you as an isp can provide your own marketing material for that particular geographical area or um, your um, uh, in that particular bsl location 
that uh, ISP is not imposing, that particular ISP is not imposing an unreasonable data cap or offers another planet this location without an unreasonable data cap. Uh, the technology. So uh, if there is a technology offered and the technology says it's a fixed wireless um, license network. However, the technology is getting delivered to that household is an unlicensed fixed wireless, net, uh, fixed wireless connectivity, which as, as per our volume one and two is not a reliable method to deliver uh, broadband connectivity. The, the customer will be able to take a picture of their CPEs or modem and send it to us for determination. You as a service provider can uh, submit evidence from your network management system showing that appropriate residential gateway that matches with the provided service. Um, business services only. If it's a residential area, as you're probably already aware, that the bid funding will go towards the residentials, not the businesses. However, if a residential address is marked as a business, unfortunately, they will not be able to take advantage of the bid funding. So we are trying to clean up that data as well. So if a resident was wrong, residence was wrongly identified as a business, uh, um, a um, a challenger or subscriber in this case will be able to provide a um, documentation and you will have an opportunity to provide a documentation if that location was mistakenly identified or you can provide a documentation that the service listed in the BDC is available at this location and marketed to consumer as a residential service. This last two I think is the most important for the ISPs. One is the enforceable commitment and another one is the planned service. So enforceable commitment means if um, you as an ISP, uh, you received federal dollars or state dollars or any other federal funding or local government funding, uh, then those areas are going to be identified in the map as already deployed funding area. So those areas are not going to be open for bid funding. So in this case, a challenger which is a local government, federal, a local government, and or unit of local government, tribal government, and nonprofit can submit a challenge, uh, um, basically describing if that ISP is not building in that particular area. So that means, in a case or in an event when the ISP defaulted on a federal funding, that will be submitted as a challenge, and if. Um, that ISP did actually file a um, default on that provided area, then we'll take that area off from the map and we'll open it up for the um, for the fine. We'll open it up for the bid funding. Um, so um, if you are an ISP and you have a federal commitment directly received from federal government, um, if you are in a non-tribal land and you did not file a default, these areas will stay in the map as non, um, I, this area will stay in a map where we will not be deploying any bid funding. These areas are going to be off limit from any bid funding because there are already federal funding there, such as ARDA funding or ECAM funding. As far as that network technology or that funding um, supports a network technology deployment which meets our category. That means it's a fiber connectivity um, or cable connectivity providing over 100 by 20, uh, or uh, it's a licensed fixed wireless providing over 100 by 20. So um, if those are the projects meeting the threshold uh, set by NTIA for unserved and underserved household, then that those areas are not going to be open for bid funding. If there are cases where USDA funding was distributed and those fundings are only for 25 by three, but using fiber connectivity. We all know that fiber can reach way more than that and certainly 100 by 20. So an, an explanation letter uh, will be great that your fiber connectivity, what you are putting on ground, the equipment, the electronics and the connectivity can definitely reach over 100 by 20. So those are a few things we need to figure out um, to make sure those are enforceable commitment for the state of Arizona. Um, and planned services. So if you as an ISP are currently deploying connectivity in an area which will be completed by June 30th, or you are in the process of deploying um, uh, that connectivity or infrastructure in an area 
which will not complete it by June 30th, but you have the evidence. Um, we are not just talking about your internal planning. We are talking about uh, your franchisee agreement with town, your permitting uh, request, if those are approved or under, under uh, review right now, your financials, your network design, um, uh, construction contract, uh, ongoing deployment evidence. Uh, you are paying your contractor, so receipt of those. Those will be acceptable. If those are submitted on the right time, or you can submit a multiple BSL as a planned service during the challenge process, and those submit, um, and if you submit those supporting document along with that, we will make sure that those areas are not open for bid funding. It has to meet our standard. It has to meet all those documentation requirement before we close that area from bid funding. Um, so these are the two most important, um, I think, um, uh, challenge type for the ISPs. Uh, a part of that, we have um, uh, location as a CI and location not as a CI. That mostly goes for the local government, uh, but if you as an ISP uh, have the correct data where you are providing in one gig symmetrical surface to, to the to, to our one of the community anchor institute listed in volume one, then and it marked as an unserved in our map, you can always submit a challenge and update that um, location as served CAI. That means you are providing one gig symmetrical surface to that CI. Those are the 11 types of challenge we have. Happy to take any question. And uh, uh, if the question is, um, if, if you are comfortable asking the question, we can unmute you and you can come online and we'll promote you as a panelist because this is a webinar, recorded webinar. We'll promote you as a panelist and feel free to ask the question. Uh, for To start with, we'll start taking the questions from the, from the chat. We've, we have received a number in the chat. Um, I'll just start at the top. Sam asks, what would be an acceptable challenge for fixed wireless folks claiming 400 megabits uh, download over a 15 mile radius of the tower, but folks only get that one mile out from the tower and it's being over reported? Uh, that's <clears throat> great question, Sam. I think um, the answer to that would be the speed test module. So if uh, the resident is using their speed test module, which will be published on ACA broadband website, um, and we'll send you all a link. And the speed is is promised uh, 400 by 50 licensed fixed wireless using licensed fixed wireless. If it's unlicensed, they don't have to submit a challenge. But if it's licensed, then they can submit a challenge. And if it's way um, um, you know lower than that, in that case, um, they they can take that challenge. They can that all these data will be recorded in our system, and the local government will submit that data um, to us. Okay. Um, the next question is from an anonymous attendee. It says, "Was that March first for when ISPs register for the challenge process portal?" Yes. So the ISPs will be able to register. Uh, the local government and tribal government will be able to register. However, you won't be able to submit a challenge until March fifteenth. However, that also depends on um, our uh, volume one approval from NTIA. If NTI does not approve our volume one by March 15th, we won't be able to um, open up the challenge process. But yes, the, the map will be open for your review, your research, your data analytics, uh, everything. And this is related, Katrina asks, will there be time for ISPs to test out the ACA portal? I would say yes, that 15 days, two weeks is basically when ISPs get to, um, uh, uh, get to test the portal. Okay. Next question is from Susan, it says, does a mansion on a mountaintop in Scottsdale who could not get service from the local providers because of a significant construction contribution was required to build to the home be considered unserved and eligible for bead? Absolutely. So it doesn't matter if it's a mansion on, um, on a Scottsdale or a small uh, mobile home in, in, uh, in rural Arizona. If those does not have the required service or threshold mentioned by NTI, 100 by 20, they will be uh, able to take advantage of the bid funding. Wonderful. And then there's one last one that's been submitted in the Q&A from Robin. It says, what if the MDU management company or owner denies access to construct to the ISP? I understand this can be challenged. Will the state assist? 
Yes, I think um, we can always assist with that to make sure that um, providing un providing universal connectivity um, to all uh, citizens here in Arizona is our priority. So we can definitely help you with that. Uh, but we will have resident here in the state or household here in the state where we'll make sure that there is a fiber drop or there are some kind of fixed analysis available in that address. But at the end of the day, it's customer's decision if you if they want to um, subscribe uh, any specific particular ISP or any kind of internet service at all. Um, so that's something uh, will be their decision. But as part of the bid funding, our commitment will be making sure if the customer for that from that location wants to subscribe an internet connectivity, that can be connected without costing any service charge or anything. That would be our um, uh, commitment towards our citizen and that would be our agreement between us and that particular ISP who's getting selected in that particular area. Okay. Um, the next question may have been cut off. Um, there was a question from Cynthia. If it's okay with you, Cynthia, may I just allow you to talk and you can ans ask your question um, verbally? I th think something should have popped up to allow you to talk if you're still with us. If I'm not wrong, I think Cynthia's question is relating, uh, re regarding enhanced ACAM. Um, Cynthia, if your organization received an enhanced ACAM award from uh, FCC, um, those are enforceable commitment. Um, if your organization does not default yet, and if that network is going to get built um, through any OLN connectivity or fixed wireless using licensed uh, frequency, and meeting the 100 by 20 threshold, that's an enforceable commitment if, I, if I'm if i understanding the question correctly. Oh yeah, thanks, I figured out how to do the unmute. And also, <laughs> in my rural area, we really need better broadband, which is always comprising, uh, make, making the uh, latency issues are huge and connectivity, so go, go bead program. Um, but the question I have is a, a company I work with, and I have a, um, a nonprofit with them on uh, ending the digital divide, the group is not a fiber layer. It is a um, uh, it enhances performance of any fiber, any broadband, and we can help get people to that last mile of performance. So we want to actually apply for these challenges, and uh, we're just wondering, you know, it's 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 uh, proven technology. So to do that, do we need to be partnered with the ISP being challenged, or can we go to a ch an area, a community that needs the performance bump and just apply that way? Uh, Cynthia, it would be very hard for me to answer that question without knowing the full background. So, and and uh, today's event, uh, today's webinar or training workshop session is for ISPs. So you are saying, and our um, event um, or workshop tomorrow is for nonprofits. You said you are working for a nonprofit. Yeah, but I work with the company that really is technically an ISP provider. It can provide broad broadband. It's just not a okay. fiber layer. That's the, so I wear two hats, but but it it actually has the technology to improve performance of any any broadband, any fiber, or be a ISP provider itself of broadband um, services. So it's a it's not fiber, but I wanted to make sure you know we could apply uh, and work with a community and, and and enhance you know offer that enhancement of performance of any fiber that's not going to make it. Again, uh, I, I think it would be uh, we can have this discussion on one on one, Cynthia. So feel free to send an email. However, I think network, um, if I can answer in a, in a very generic way, network upgrade is also an eligible um, uh, uh, category for bid funding. So if there is a, already an infrastructure on the ground, but which is not meeting the 100 by 20 standard, um, uh, the, the provider can apply for bid funding and upgrade the network. Uh, and if they can provide more than 100 by 20, that's something uh, we are definitely open to. But okay. uh, feel free to send an email uh, and we can discuss I offline. I would appreciate that because I want to do it right and not waste anyone's time, but we really have something special to offer. And oh, and thank you for somebody put in the chat or, uh, or in the, the uh, e email. So you're going to be able to get a lot of people, Sandy. I just want you to know a lot of people are going to email you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, sure, sure. Absolutely. And we we welcome any 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 kind of like, you know, communication or any question you have. That's our job to make sure that you are fully uh, aware about the program and uh, fully educated about the program. Right. 
thanks very much. And thanks for letting me talk instead of type, given my circumstances. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. So we have not received any other questions through the Q&A box, and I'm not seeing anything in the regular chat at this time. So I just want to um, reach out and say, you know, don't forget to use those if, if you do have questions. I believe you should also be able to raise your hand if you click on the reactions button down at the bottom. Um, you should be able to raise your hand and then we can unmute you as well if there are additional questions. I think one one uh, piece of information I would like to add, if you're an ISP and you are not sure <clears throat> that, or if you're an ISP and received any um, federal loans to build infrastructure, and you, if you're not sure if that was identified in the FCC broadband map, I would highly recommend you to check the FCC broadband map. We will have the same kind of layer in our map as well, but our map is not going to be live for another I don't know, eight, nine days. So I would highly recommend you to go to FCC map and check. Uh, if it's a loan you received, we are also not going to overbuild on those areas uh, with bid funding, if it's meeting the requirements of bid funding. But if it's not in the map, then we don't have that information at this point or that was not provided by FCC. So I would highly recommend you to go have a look in the FCC publication, uh, FCC published uh, public map and see what federally funding um, uh, maps they have. And if your uh, funding is in on the map for that specific BSLs or the polygons or, or the funding amount you have received. Okay, we do still have 15 minutes left. If anyone does have any additional questions, please let us know. I think I have, uh, <clears throat> we have one question. Did oh, you just, just say that in? you have a loan in place? We are talking about the federal loans. If you have taken a loan, we are not talking about from a bank or a federal um, investor. Yes, those are, um, sorry, private investor. Those are allowed. You can submit them as a, um, planned service area. Uh, if you received fair, um, private funding to build in an, in a particular area and building the expectation of bid funding, those are also acceptable. But if you received any any loans, particularly speaking, USDA has a lot of loan program, the RUS loan grant, and you are building in an area with over 100 by 20 requirement or equal to 100 by 20 requirement. Um, you can submit that as a challenge, but also those are public information. So feel free, go have a look um, in the FCC challenge portal. That will also be published as part of our portal as well. Sorry, I didn't mean to say FCC challenge portal, the FCC public map, broadband map. Um, so it seems like I'm not exactly sure if I'm assuming it's a private funding. So if it's a private funding and you are building in a certain area, that's a planned service challenge. That means you received the funding, you went through the process, if you did, and you have permitting on your hand or construction is currently underway, you can submit those documentation as part of the planned challenge process. Um, we can read this out loud. I don't think people can see the questions unless um, unless okay. they're yeah. us. So yeah. <laughs> uh, so can ISPs submit bulk UCLA crowdsourced data as opposed to a residential user? No. Um, so I think it will be um, the speed test need to be taken by the residential users.
Um, we have uh, our federal program officer um, from NTI, Nicole Umayam, is in this call as well. So um, feel free to ask her any question. Nicole, I uh, just wanted to make sure you are online. I just promoted her to a panelist, so she'll be right back. Um, while we're waiting, we have another question from an anonymous attendee. As we discussed, that doesn't work for WISPs with limited speed plans. Just want to point out that we are working on an alternative. As we discussed that. I'm not I'm sure who not it is. Sure about, <laughs> I'm not sure what. Oh, it's Rory. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I think um, uh, we, we can take this discussion offline. Hey, everybody. Sorry, it uh, takes a second to switch to a panelist, but yep, um, I'm here as a, a resource and, and happy to happy to support. Um, I think I have access to the chat now, so I'll put my contact info in there too. Sure. Um, I, I'm I'm not really sure about this question. I, I was pointing this out in case other Wisp wanted to contact us. Um, it's it's okay. probably Rory again. Okay, um, Katrina, we have your um. <laughs> oh yes, let me, Katrina. Oh, sorry. Here we go. Allow to talk. All right, Katrina, you should have an option to unmute yourself now. It, I believe it is in the taskbar at the bottom of the Zoom window. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I was not uh, trying to ask a question. Oh, okay. Hello then. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Um, <clears throat> we'll be hosting this uh, workshop or training session or Q&A session in the mon month of March, April uh, until May. Uh, so stay tuned. There will be more data published. Uh, as I mentioned that at the end of first week of March, so March 6th or 7th, our partner AppGeo will be providing a overview, a training session that how you can submit a challenge. A guidebook will also be published on the state broadband website um, so that you can follow the step-by-step -step procedure. As an ISP, you are able to submit bulk challenge. So the challenge can be submitted from somewhere between one address to 10,000 BSL within one um, spreadsheet. So we'll be uploading those documentation as well, those templates. So please use that template to upload uh, when you are uploading bulk challenge. Otherwise, the system will not let you submit the bulk challenge. And uh, there will be office hours. So there will be office hours every single Tuesday for uh, two hours, 30 minute slot. So if you have any question regarding any challenge process, we can set up a one-on-one -on -one call and we can answer your question. Our um, objective at this point to make sure all the ISPs, local government, tribal government, and units of local government, nonprofit organization are fully aware about the challenge process. And we are helping everyone with the right amount of resources, educational material, and training um, in this whole challenge process timeline. Hey, um, if there is no question for today's workshop, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, uh, we'll send email. And this session will be recorded and posted on Arizona Commerce Authority Broadband website and this PowerPoint as well. So um, thank you so much, everyone. And if you have any question, directly reach out to us or one of our team members. We'll be happy to help. Getting a couple of thank yous. Uh I don't want to miss any of them, so you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you.